Welcome to our review on plate tectonics and igneous rocks. So what we need to understand then is that there have actually been many theories that have been put forward to explain the nature of the Earth's surface. But these days we only accept one, which is the theory of plate tectonics. Now the reason that we accept the theory of plate tectonics over all of the others is because it explains a wide range of evidence from the world and it's been discussed and tested by scientists around the world for many years and this is now widely accepted because of that. If we go back to 1914 then we had this scientist called Alfred Wegener and he published his idea on something called continental drift. Now this idea of continental drift was that the continents were once all joined together and then over time they've moved away from each other and moved apart. Even though he published this back in 1914, his theory wasn't actually believed until the 1960s and the reason behind that was because scientists hadn't been able to explain how the continents moved until then. So it's all good and fine having an idea but if you can't explain how it happens, people are less inclined to believe it. So what they actually found in the 1960s was the evidence that the tectonic plates were actually moving apart under the Atlantic Ocean and this led to something called seafloor spreading and also this process of subduction. If we consider rocks then, what we know is that if we heat them to a high enough temperature then rocks will melt. And depending on where we find this molten rock is going to determine the name we use for it. So anytime we're talking about magma we're talking about molten rock under the surface of the earth and anytime we're talking about lava we're talking about molten rock above the earth's surface. So remember the distinction between magma and lava. So magma is under the earth's surface, lava on the earth's surface. Now when that molten rock actually cools down it forms a type of rock called igneous rocks and we can see igneous rocks have some very distinctive characteristics. Firstly they contain crystals so what we find is that those crystals lock together and then that means that they're going to form a nice solid rock and what we find is that the size of the crystal that we actually generate depends on how quickly it cooled. So if we think about lava which is on the surface of the earth remember then lava actually cools quickly and as a result the crystals are small. If we think about magma which is under the surface of the earth that cools slowly and makes much larger crystals. So slow cooling is large crystals, fast cooling is small crystals. If we look at a couple of examples of these igneous rocks then, we have basalt and gabbro first of all. Now both of those are rich in iron and the gabbro has much larger crystals than basalt because it cooled slower. If we compare rhyolite and granite, they're both rich in silica but granite has got larger crystals than the rhyolite because it cooled slower. So if we consider volcanoes then, one thing we do know is that the volcanic soil, so the soil that surrounds our volcanoes, is actually very fertile. Now the reason behind that is because it's got lots of minerals that the plants need to grow. So what we actually find is, despite the dangers, some people actually choose to live on the slopes of volcanoes because where the soil is nice and fertile, they can grow much better crops to support their families and businesses. Now if we look at different volcanoes when they erupt, then they don't all erupt the same way. What we'll find is some volcanoes erupt with thick lava and are more violent, whereas others erupt with a runny lava that's less violent. So the reason behind this is all down to what is the lava made of. So we've got basalt which is iron rich and that one when melted will form the runny lava. And that one's going to flow nice and steadily and is actually regarded as relatively safe. This is the kind of lava flow that you could probably outwalk in most cases. If we think about rhyolite then which is a silica rich rock, then that one when melted will form this very thick lava. Now the thick lava is more problematic because it will explode out of the volcano producing things called lava bombs and it will produce lots of volcanic ash. So the silica rich lava is the one that is more dangerous because it's less predictable. One group of scientists that are associated with all things rocks and volcanoes and the like are the geologists. And geologists will actually study volcanoes to actually learn about the earth structure first of all and to see if they can predict future eruptions. And obviously if we can predict future eruptions, then we can give people warning so they can get out of harm's way in time. 